Now, what are important terminologies that you need to understand? These terminologies are not mentioned in Nelson, but in the Indian setting, they have been given by Indian Society of Pediatric Nephrology. And so you may be asked questions related to these. So how are we going to define them? First is, how do you define significant bacteriuria? Bacteriuria means bacteria being passed into urine. So significant bacteriuria is defined as more than 10 raised to power 5 colonies per ml of a single bacteria in a clean catch in a midstream clean catch urine sample will be called as significant bacteriuria in the patient right what is asymptomatic bacteriuria? Asymptomatic bacteriuria. When there are no signs and symptoms, no clinical features, but there is significant bacteriuria. We call it as asymptomatic bacteriuria. Please remember there is a clinical MCQ on this. Asymptomatic bacteriuria. does not require therapy does not require therapy except in cases of pregnancy so whether it is a newborn child adult old age you do not treat asymptomatic bacteriuria except pregnant females where it needs to be treated right it is a past mcq so first definition is significant bacteriuria second definition or terminology is asymptomatic bacteriuria the third definition is UTI. What is UTI? UTI is combination of two things. Presence of any specific or non-specific clinical features. That is any sign and symptom should be there. Along with a significant positive urine culture. Only when both the conditions are fulfilled, we will call it as UTI. If there is no clinical feature, there is no such thing in this world as asymptomatic UTI. Please understand that. If the word UTI is being used, there has to be a sign and symptom. It may be a subtle sign or it may be an obvious sign like fever with chills, uh, dysuria, abdominal pain, etc. So UTI. Then we talk about the types of UTI. There are two types of UTI which are seen, simple and complicated. What is complicated UTI? Any UTI as defined above, clinical features with significant bacteriuria or significant positive urine culture plus any one of the following is called as complicated UTI. Which are the uh, features? If the child has fever more than 39 degrees Celsius, high grade fever. If the child has dehydration, if the child has vomiting, if the child has a renal angle tenderness which will indicate the presence of pyelonephritis if the child has raised serum creatinine or if there are features of systemic toxicity these are the six features if any one of them or more are present with uti we call it as complicated uti there is definition for simple uti also but remember all others uti are called as simple uti Simple UTI will be the ones where there is low grade fever, there are features of urgency, hesitancy, etc. But there will be no rise in serum creatinine, no high grade fever and no signs of systemic sepsis. That will be called as simple UTI. So better is always remember the definition and criteria for complicated UTI. The other ones are simple UTI. And what is recurrent UTI? Recurrent UTI, very simple. You don't need to have multiple UTIs. Any second episode of child any second episode of uti in a child is called as recurrent uti so suppose there is a child who got first uti at seven months of age then at five years of age the child gets another uti now he will be labeled as having a recurrent uti because two episodes have happened irrespective of the time period this is a very very important thing that you need to remember subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder